Do you know how many people have sent me the tiny hippo and his tiny train cartoon? Yeah. <laughs> I have been sent that cartoon about 500 times, and I love it. It's adorable. I love tiny hippo. Thank you all for thinking of me, but seriously, I get hippo stuff. Like I, I have duplicates of many hippos and many hippo links. And when that baby hippo was born at the San Diego Zoo, oh my god, my email blew up for like two days. <laughs> Oh my god, there's a baby hippo, you have to look at it. And that's an adorable baby this hippo. This is what happened. You 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 became the but hippo yeah, lady. That's me, I'm the hippo lady. So now like everybody in the universe is like, holy shit, it's a hippo, we have to set it to Tara. And that's lovely and I appreciate it. But this is what happens, you know. This is what happens when you find a stranger in the eyes. I exist inside like the hippo singularity. I do. Okay. Are you ready to begin the nonsense? I hope so. I hope I'm not rusty. Well, we shall Two find. We shall see. All right, let's hit up the intro here. Okay, each week, Catherine goes out on the worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible stuff, brings it back here in a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And we're starting this week... With something that, if you're even only marginally cool, this would not, you would know this. This is one of those basic cool facts. But apparently it escaped the organizers of the upcoming Olympics. See, they wanted All right. a fine young gentleman by the name of Keith Moon to play yeah. their... Jolly Olympic opening in London, except and this is this is honest to God truth. Organizers of the London Olympics approached the Who's manager to inquire about having Keith Moon play an Olympics event, despite the drummer being dead for thirty-four years. Well, you know, Tupac just closed out Coachella. So, and, and obviously, as is stated in the YouTube comments on that video, that wasn't a hologram. He just filmed that where he's hiding out in Cuba and mailed the footage to Dre, who used it for the show. So I guess that's different because Tupac is just like living on a commune with Elvis and Biggie and the aliens. But Keith Moon's probably there too, let's be honest. Jim Morrison, maybe. How do you get to be the organizers of the London Olympics? Which, on, where, there's a big controversy going on in England right now, considering how much money they have dumped into the Olympics, how much money has been cut from things like uh, food programs and student loans and all that shit. And how offensively bad the logo is. Yes. And it's all been dumped into the Olympics. So if you've got all these m million, billion, kajillion dollars behind you, and you can't operate the Google, hey, let's do some. Well, and it's hmm? the who are from England, right? Yes. Presumably, that's why they wanted them. Yes. Because they like to have, you know. So it's a band from your own country, and it's not that big a country, like. England's oh, not a small country. It's oh no, not like Oh no, Tara. Oh no, you're going to the comments are going to go. What do you mean England's that big? What do you mean? No, I mean geographically speaking, yeah, it's, it's not a tiny country. It's no. not like we're it's not like the country Anne Hathaway was princess of in whatever that movie is. But you know, it's not like Canada. You know, it's not like there's vast areas of geographic area to deal with. You'd think you'd be aware. If you live in that, England, you know who the fucking who is. Tommy, yeah. Quadrophenia, biggest fucking rock and roll. God damn. This is like saying, and you know, after we get that nice Keith Moon fella, why don't we get the Doctor What? Let's have the Doctor What on. You know what they should do? They should reunite the Beatles. They should. That Which would really. brings to mind a really awful joke that we shall not. You do know, uh, all right, you do know the old joke, right? No. What is it What's it going to take for a Beatles reunion? Three more bullets? Yeah. Dennis Leary, everyone. 
would be two now, wouldn't it? It would be, but this at the time there were three of them. Hey, you know, Hole got back together over the weekend too, so nothing is impossible. Hmm. Yeah, they performed at. They, I guess they did a. They uh, did a. What do you call those movies that are true? Documentary. Yeah. About the drummer's life and uh, the band performed together at the reunion or at the premiere, rather. Mm. Courtney Love might be dead. Someone's like, Courtney Love's not dead. And I'm like, prove it. So um, we have more nonsense and uh, we're going into our back into the good old fashioned nonsense. This come from Baltimore County, Baltimore. Balmer. Um, Is that how they talk there? Balmer. They call, it's called Balmer. You've never seen The Wire. You need to watch The Wire, young lady. Um, I don't have TV. I watch everything on Hulu. Oh. This, this is... Uh, Which makes me sad, because I don't get to watch Mad Men anymore. So, Walmart and, is one of those places... Um, that could go so many ways. Yeah. <laughs> We've seen people do a lot of shit in the Walmart, but um, I think this is officially the first time... When someone has been banned from Walmart. You can get banned from the Walmart? For five years! Teresa Mono Monique, sorry, Teresa Monique Jefferson gets a five-year suspended sentence. A Lansdowne woman was ordered to stay out of Walmart for five years after pleading guilty Wednesday to misdemeanor assault in a bleach and pine saw fight that briefly shut down a Baltimore County store last fall. Is that what happened to her hair? Maybe. Because wow. it looks like half her hair is burned off. Yeah. Um, Teresa M. Jefferson, 33, pled guilty to second-degree assault in the altercation with Ebony Odoms, 38, which broke out October 8 inside a Walmart at the Lansdowne Station Shopping Center. Um... A brief remarks to the court, Jackson said, I definitely would apologize, would apologize that the incident escalated to the level it did. A tall woman with long hair, dressed in slacks and a short-sleeved shirt. I don't know why that's in the article. Jefferson said the episode was, quote, a humiliating and embarrassing experience, one that won't happen again. How are they going to enforce that? I know, She's right? banned from all the war Walmarts. You know how many fucking Walmarts there are in this country? You know how big they are? She could get a job at Walmart and no one's going to know. According... Yeah, true. Which is sad. According to the uh, police account of the fight, Jefferson and Odoms have been feuding for some time because Odoms was engaged to Calvin Pinnell. It's over a man. Oh, God. Jefferson's former boyfriend and the father of her seven-year-old son. Police said Pinnell and Odoms claimed Jefferson had threatened Odoms in the past. Blah, 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 blah. Um, Jefferson reached for a bottle of bleach from a shelf, opened the bottle, and poured the bleach on Odoms. Odoms then grabbed a bottle of pine saw and speared, spilled it on Jefferson. The two chemicals combined to create fumes that sickened some customers. Yeah. <sighs> Don't play with fucking bleach. You, you know, you could create what is and it? Wait, mustard gas she's, or she's a chlorine. radiology student. Yes. So that presumably involves some science classes. Yeah. So you'd like to think someone going into a medical profession would be smart enough not to just start hurling dangerous chemicals around in public. Yeah, but I was, I'm, I'm correct. It's chlorine gas. When you combine stuff, you are effectively making chlorine gas. Yeah. You can't fucking mix bleach and ammonia because then you're going to die. You will kill people. I'm amazed. I'm so glad nobody died. But still, okay, I think we've established what it takes to get banned from the Walmart is weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> That's that's the line. You know, you, you can you can do all sorts of shit in the Walmart, but when you bring in the chemical weapons, that's the line. Well, because then the terrorists win. <laughs> I, Can't have that at the Walmart. You know what's popped in my head? You've seen Oh Brother Where Art Thou, yes? 
No. You've never seen it? And no. stay out of the Woolworth! That's, that's... I've seen parts of it. Weirdly, I've never no. seen the whole movie. Not on purpose. Like, it looks like a good movie. That's, that's, that's what it... Moving on. So, kids... Now, the question is, we've done a lot of mobile meth lab stories. Can you get banned from the Walmart for creating a mobile meth lab in the Walmart? No, because we had one occasion where a woman actually cooked meth in the Walmart. See, how... That's okay, apparently, but the line, chemical Making weapon. Making meth in the Walmart, totally okay. Well, not with the Getting police. A... The police had something to say about it, but... Well, I know, but I'm talking. How did that chick not get banned from the Walmart? She was fucking cooking meth. The Walmart blacklist. This is going to become a thing. Okay, so kids are precocious, aren't they? That's racist because she's actually black. What? You can't say Walmart blacklist when the lady's actually black. Well, it's not a blacklist. It's a blacklist, not a blacklist. It doesn't matter. You know how PC this whole country is? You can't say that. Oh, my God. What should I call it? A red list? Cause I was a red You're going to get offered a job by Fox News, like, tomorrow. We're ruining all you. our words. It's going to be Bill O'Reilly and then Nash. We're ruining all our words. I would actually pay cash money to see you get a show on the Fox Network. I think that would be... Hilarious. I burned the place down. So, can I get back to the stories? Yeah. We have a limited time. Got to get through them. So, kids, is pre- you have a little nephew, don't you? I have two nephews and two nieces. Yes, and they, they, are, they are a precocious lot, are they not? They are. Um, they ever done show and tell? Yes. School? Okay, well, um... This, this uh, next kid found an interesting thing to bring... Uh, from home to show and tell um and that thing was heroin a five-year-old boy brought packets of heroin to oh, a show so and tell bad. at his connecticut kindergarten connecticut connecticut leading to the arrest of his stepfather the child was proudly displaying packets of a powdery substance to his kindergarten classmates in Bridgeport, Connecticut on Monday. When his, oh, it's Bridgeport. Well, that explains it. That's our hood. When his teacher noticed what he was holding, he was waving it around. Authorities called, and a field test determined the substance was heroin. Uh, later, the child's stepfather, Santos Roman, 35, showed up at the school, and he was arrested. Here's the money quote. He wanted to retrieve the heroin. Well, yeah, that shit's expensive. And it wasn't there, so he came back for his stepson. (laughs) So he wanted the heroin first. Then the kid. I guess I'll take the kid, too. You probably should keep your heroin stash where the kids can't get it. You do realize this kid is now officially the coolest motherfucker in school forever. Well, yeah. His his reputation is solid until graduation. Like, he's got more fucking street cred than Tupac, 50 Cent, and Biggie combined, this kid. No, you're, 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 I was yeah. fucking hanging out. I was fucking carrying heroin around in kindergarten. I was, I was carrying in kindergarten, motherfucker. Oh, oh, you're playing with blocks? I got some rocks. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. I, wow. Oh, Bridgeport. Bridgeport is actually the city where my friend got accosted by a hooker and had his McDonald's stolen from him. Yes. That's Bridgeport. So home of home of PT Barnum. So so that is a kid actually walking around with heroin. Yeah. But he doesn't get arrested. Well, he's five. You say that. You say that. Wait for it. What, do you it. want him to send him to fucking Rakers? He's five. Oh, the segue. The segue. I'm... Th- wonderful segue. You know why I'm saying all this? Because our very next story. Very next story. Milledgeville police handcuff six-year-old for misbehaving in <sighs> school. 
Milledgeville police said they handcuffed an elementary school student for safety after she allegedly threw a tantrum. Um, according to the police report, kindergartner Celicia Johnson was crying in the principal's office before police arrived Friday. The report says that when the officer tried to calm the child, she resisted and was cuffed. Our policy is that any detainee unreported to our station in a patrol vehicle is to be handcuffed in the back. There is no age discrimination on that rule, said the Millage Chief of Police. Uh, Johnson is accused, uh, accused of tearing items off the walls and throwing furniture. The report mentions the girl knocked over a shelf and injured the principal. Why did they have to take the six-year-old to the station at all. Was she booked? Like, she's six. She's six. There is, no, there is no reason in the world you need to take that kid down to the fucking station unless it's because her parents can't be found or something. Like, and why did the school call the fucking police? Like, yes. What? It's a six-year. You cannot deal. With a six, you are, you are professional educators. This is your job. And you cannot deal like, with a six-year-old. Yeah. It's a six-year-old. You can punt a six-year-old. Well, generally speaking, that's frowned upon. It's if frowned you're an upon, educator. yes. But if you're they cowering... Really, really don't let you teach school if you tend to punt children. If you're cowering your office from a six-year-old and calling the cops going... Well, I mean, a six-year-old on a real tear will fuck you up if you're not going to fight back. And if you're a teacher, you're not going to fight back. So, fine. Like, that kid could fuck you up. If she's throwing shit, I mean, anybody can throw shit that will hurt you. Any being with opposable thumbs can throw something and put your eye out. Fine. Well, also, I'm wondering, how the hell they get the handcuffs to stay on her? But isn't there, like, a school counselor or something they could have yeah. called first? Like... Something? I have a hard time believing the, that this got so out of hand that they had to bring the police in. But the kid with the heroin, he's fine. Yeah. Well, that's Bridgeport. Um, and you know, it's not like he was selling it. It's a six-year-old, for Christ's sake. Yeah. If you have to call the cops to deal with a six-year-old, new career. If you are a cop and you have to handcuff a six-year-old, new career. Idiot! Can they even make the cuff small enough to fit a six-year-old? I six -year -old know that's what I'm saying. How does it, was it just, how did like, they get the fucking my handcuffs? Nieces, my nieces are six and seven, and I'm here to tell you their wrists are pretty fucking small. Like I don't even know if cuffs get that small. Like. Are we talking actual cuffs or the zip tie things? Well, they they probably have special cuffs for small fetishists. That's the best I can think of. Yeah, the cops carry them? Or do they run down to the sex shop? <laughs> I'm thinking the cops don't carry multiple sets of cuffs in case they, like, happen to arrest Tyrion Lannister on his way to the brothel. <laughs> I had to get the, the Game of Thrones in there. All right. Well, of course, this wouldn't be our show without absolute bug fuckery. And this is vague bug fuckery at that. This comes to us from Florida, of course. Um, I, I dare you to make less sense. Ketchup-covered homeless man bemoans tourist effect on Key West. Key West Citizen oh. reports that a man was covered in ketchup, sprawled in the middle of an old town street, and screaming profanities about tourists, ruining his town. He was arrested early Wednesday. The 42-year-old homeless man was charged with misdemeanor disorderly conduct and misdemeanor resisting arrest. And that's it, huh? That's the whole story. That's it. All right. So, uh, do you know this is Florida when they're just like, well, it's got another homeless guy, this time covered in ketchup. And now weather. Yeah, they just barrel right on past that shit. 
Who define irony. Details? Define irony. Homeless condiment covered man screaming about who's ruining his neighborhood. <laughs> Are the tourists mustard people? Is that the problem? Oh, the damn mustards! I hate them <laughs> mustards! Especially the spicy ones! <laughs> Is he trying to start some kind of burger topping war? Fuck all them fancy gray poupons. <laughs> Keeping the Heinz man down. I <laughs> Maybe he's just a really, really disenfranchised John Kerry voter. Oh, that's going way back. I know, that's that's some that's a fucking deep cut right there. That's a deep cut. That's some obscure shit. <laughs> I just all right, there's the your homeless shit happens. I get it, but I would expect to do more constructive things with my time being homeless, like attempting not to be homeless would be probably the focus of my existence. Not I presume he went to a fast food joint and just took all of the ketchup. Then went somewhere and coated himself. In ketchup. Maybe, in preparation you know, for this. Maybe some fucking tourist sprayed him down with ketchup. And that's what got him so angry. No, I sense planning here. I sense planning. Maybe, maybe some, like, fucking everything you picture when someone says the phrase ugly American tourist in, like, a Wisconsin cheese head hat came fresh from the Chick-fil-A... And he asked him for, like, some money to buy some Chick-fil-A for himself. And that tourist was like, fuck you, I'm American. What's mine is mine. Get a job, hippie, and cover him in ketchup. But now do you understand accurate. how many ketchup packets it takes to cover someone in ketchup? I haven't tried. It's not. I, I can tell you, it's more than two. I'm pretty sure more than two. All right, but the kind of the kind of tourist I'm talking about totally like carries a ketchup IV at all times. Now you're you're just going into space now. You're just going away. <laughs> you're going away. Oh. So it's time for another man cringe uh story. Um hell, this one even might make you cringe. That's how bad this is. We've had people do creative things to smuggle drugs on this show men and women alike and they've never been happy events this one gentlemen brace yourselves um it's from philadelphia dealer tied 89 ah, bags to i know this one peed at station uh, Fulcroft Police Corporal Christopher Iserman has seen a lot during his 14 years as a cop in Delaware County. Uh, an alleged Philly drug dealer staying in the station with 89 bags of dope hanging from his schlong. And that's, that's the new, that's from the actual story, the word schlong. <laughs> that is naturally the professional technical term. Was not one of them. Um, Iserman and another office, officer were on a routine patrol fr uh, Friday when he pulled Woods over for a broken rear light and found marijuana in his car. The officer searched Woods before placing him in a police cruiser. He discovered, quote, a large bulge at the front of his pants. Police say Woods actually had the balls now, to deny there was any contraband there. As a police officer, how do you approach that scenario? Like, how do you walk up to the guy and be like, why, sir? I notice there's a large bulge in your pants. Are there drugs <laughs> down your shorts, or are you like, just happy to see me? Or are you just really well endowed? And what if he is just really well endowed, and you're, like, the sexual harassment cop? Um, Awkward. Back at the station, Eiserman said police discovered Woods had tied a large plastic bag around his penis that contained a whopping 89 smaller bags, suspected heroin and cocaine. Then things got messy. It would have been 90, but his nephew took one to school. I tried to remove it. Unfortunately, I don't know if it was nervousness or not. Oh, he started urinating all. Oh. Yeah, he peed on the cop. <laughs> Which tells me 
these things combine to tell me that this guy is some kind of freaky fetishist because if you if you do a little web searching it doesn't take much there are totally people that are into like having weights hung off their their business like yeah, i mean there there are people that do that for religious reasons or whatever but there are totally people that are just into that as like a thing gets their jollies off, you know, whatever, I don't judge. But, like, they, they literally, like, have their, have their mistress tie weights to their business. And then everybody knows about the, like, peeing on people fetish. I mean, R. Kelly, come on. So that tells me that this guy is just into some freaky shit. Every word out of your mouth just made me sad. Stop it! <laughs> you tell me you don't have, like, a couple of Dumbbell free weights tied to your dick right now? Don't lie. <laughs> They're so mad at me right now. But I defy you, like, given the demographic that we deal with and the number of people that watch, I promise you people, one of you is watching right now with weights tied to your dick. One of you out there. Or you're doing it later. I promise you, probability just supports it. Can we move on? <laughs> <clears throat> and this thing gonna either pee on somebody or get peed on later. Our final story comes from Tennessee. <laughs> Nashville, Tennessee, to be precise. And this is, quite simply, the most amazing man in the world. It's not that guy, it's not the most, in, the most interesting man in the world is not that guy with the beer. It's this guy. Um, and he looks pretty unassuming when you see him. Um, he looks just, you know, kind of regular, regular sort of guy. Um... Nashville, Tennessee. Metro police said they've never encountered a man quite like William Todd, who they say in just nine hours managed to wreak havoc on Nashville. Police say Todd traveled to Nashville on a Greyhound bus. During his nine-hour layover, officers said he committed more than ten felonies. Officers said Todd broke into the slaughterhouse, stole a taser revolver and shotgun. Then they said he shot the business up, stole a t-shirt, uh, and set the business on fire. Police said Todd then found four people leaving a lo local bar, held them at gunpoint, tased one, pistol whip another, and then took off with their cash and credit cards. Five minutes later, investigators said Todd carjacked a cab at gunpoint, and then headed off to commit fraud and used his newly acquired stolen credit cards to buy food, he was able to find the Walmart in Nolensville. There he purchased $199 worth of items. Next stop, Hotel Indigo at 6 a.m. Police say Todd broke into a law office there, ransacked the business, defecated on a desk, smearing species on some of the framed law degrees. He then knocked on several hotel room doors, pretending to be a female housekeeper. At one point, police said Todd stole $600 from a Canadian couple at gunpoint, Crying the whole time before taking off at his stolen cab once again, officer said Tom, uh, Todd opted for a new look. We have video of him leaving the hotel with a shaved head. Police said Todd crashed the stolen cab into a parking garage. At 11.30, hailed a new one and headed to Opryland, then held the cab driver at knife point. Police finally caught Todd at noon. They said he was hiding on top of Opryland, submerged in a water cooling vat with water up his nose. It was just a nine-hour pit stop in Nashville, but Todd won't be headed home anytime soon. <coughs> he's now facing 11 felony charges, and he's also wanted out of Kentucky. On a layover. On a layover. Why? Grand <laughs> Theft Auto, the live version. This Where were you going? I augmented reality. You're doing it wrong. 
I want to to be now. All right, two things I want to say about this. Number one, he did not kill anyone. The worst he did was he did tase someone. He did pistol whip someone else. That's not great. Nobody died, fortunately. But this is a sort of berserk that just leaves me in awe. That must have been a really, really bad bus ride. <laughs> like, I've had some bad traveling experiences in my life. I, I took 18 hours to get home from New Orleans with strep, and that sucked, but damn, like... How bad did that bus have to smell? <laughs> uh, Jimmy86 on the channel. The Aristocrats, the live tour! <laughs> I am amazed by this guy. He just, he... Do you remember that, that uh, movie Falling Down? Yes. This is like the, the, the updated remake, isn't it? That guy had a point, like not a good point, but there was like a reason he went berserk. This is this is like a remake of that. I feel like we're missing a reason here. Like falling what, down to falling harder. What, what was the end game? Like get off bus, fuck up Nashville, get on next bus. <laughs> yes. Why? Why? What was the point? Well, okay, Tara. What was the thesis? Tara, you do realize at this moment, you sound like me. You want to know why. I always want to know why. I want to know why they wind up naked. I want to know why they <laughs> snort bath salts. I want to know why they decide to fuck around with wild animals at the zoo. This was just... <laughs> God damn. I want to know why they decide to trade sexual favors for fast food. 11 felonies in 9 hours. Someone in the channel went, achievement unlocked. Yes! Yeah, maybe he was just like going for a record. I guarantee goddamn to you, someone is looking right now eagerly to see if this belongs in the Guinness Book. Because holy shit. 11 felonies. They're all asking me how, how we could have done it better since I am now apparently the authority on how to be a better criminal. No, no, no. I don't know. This is pretty fucking efficient. This is awesome. It's like I he's mean, going down a checklist. Let's see. Arson. Check. Uh, robbery. Check. Assault. Check. Public indecency. Check. What gets me, though, is that moment where they said he was crying while doing this. That makes yeah. me feel a little sad about this whole affair. You know, I, I feel a little sorry for him. Just... I don't. <laughs> oh, but they made it. He made himself cry. Yeah. Well, you know... And loathe as, well as I am to reference Dane Cook. Oh, this is the first thing coming in my mind. I did my best. I did my best. That's what I was thinking of. I just, like, I really, really wonder what the fuck the plan was. And, like, here's the thing, like, had he been in Nashville before? Because this yes. seems like... Alright, a lot of planning, like, you don't just happen upon a slaughterhouse while waiting for your next bus. And then, like, break in and know where the fucking guns are. And why are there guns in the slaughterhouse anyway? But anyway. That's the name of the, the store. But it, fuck. All right, Tara. Oh, okay. It's Nashville. And stole a t-shirt. It's Nashville. You ever been there? No. They have a stage in the Bass Pro Shop where country musicians come and play. In the Bass Pro Shop. Like fishing gear? Yes. Okay. Need I say more? Why do they have that? 
Because it's Nashville. Why can you go to a country music concert at the fishing store? Because it's Nashville. You want to know why a place called the Slaughterhouse has guns and tasers? And Nashville. Okay. I thought they meant like a real slaughterhouse where they no. kill cows and turn them into meat. No. So, okay. Now I'm only more confused. Nashville. I just, I just don't get the South. No, it's it's, and, it's you hard know, to wrap. Bring on your haterade, but I just don't get. I live the here. Like, it's a little hard to wrap your head around. I can. Everything, everything below the Mason Dixon is kind of just a big old anomaly to me. Cause well, okay. I am such a pussy New Englander, you, a Long Islander. You're, you know, you say you don't get the South. We don't get Florida, so we don't consider Florida. Technically, to be part Florida of the is South. yours. No, we no, it isn't. We've di- we disowned them. They have been disowned. They are not mm-hmm. part of the South. So, I think the first thing we learned tonight is, if you will it, dude, it is no dream. Because this guy kind of pretty much proved it. If you I- will it, it is no dream. <laughs> Holy shit! That that is just. Wow, I am impressed. I, 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 you I know. mean, yeah, I mean, I, I give him points for initiative. He's no slacker. No, that's. He's got to go get him attitude for sure. Um, let's see. We've learned that um, ketchup, not a good element of protest. Signs, maybe. Um, chanting, uh, loudspeaker. Ketchup? Well, I think no. he had the chanting. He had the, yeah, well, also, chanting, it's got to be more than random profanities. I can do that. It's not mm-hmm. chanting. It's its not, doesn't take a lot of talent, I promise you. So, little organization, um, just say, uh, <clears throat> we've learned that uh, if you bring, if you are in kindergarten and bring heroin to school, You'll go home scot free, but God forbid you throw a tantrum because then they'll we fucking call learned, the cops. We also learned two different places heroin does not belong. Mm, yes, in the kindergarten classroom and tied to your dick. Tied to your. Pe- Ow! Because all right, maybe one little tiny bag. One of those weights shift on you. <laughs> you didn't deny it. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm just saying you didn't deny it. That's all. One bag couldn't weigh that much, but 80? How much one of those little bags weigh? Like a couple grams? I don't know. Like, I do a lot of heroin. You're from the north. You're from Long Island. I mean, yes, my mom did work in methadone clinics. You should know this. Sorry, I'll study up on my heroin. I expect next time. Yes, I expect you will. Um, we've learned that uh, you can, in fact, get banned from the fucking Walmart. Yeah, but not for cooking meth. No, chemical weapons only. It's you know it. it unless... Didn't you explain to me at length how making meth basically is a chemical weapon lab? Yeah. But unless you violate the Bush Doctrine, I guess. I guess that's the that's the line in the sand. Ironically, they had to hold Cheney back from invading the Walmart. Chemical weapons, wah! Yeah, yeah. Wah, wah, wah. That's, that's, that's dumb. I know, I know. That's worse. And I hope she's never my radiologist, because she doesn't know how science works. No, she doesn't. Wah, wah, wah. All right, anyway. And finally, we've learned that you can throw billions of dollars into organizing an Olympic event and still the people running it yeah. are going to be complete imbeciles. Google! It's not a diff- diff- Keith, watch right now. Let's see. I'm a- time me. Fucking time me. Try it. K-E-I-T-H-M-O-O-N. Enter. Boom! How long was that? Less than a minute. First entry. 
first entry, Keith John Moon, 23 August 1946, 7 September 1978. That means he's dead. How long did that picture get rid of? How hard was that? Nobody, hey, Olympic people, you owe me money now. You know, I'm doing your research for you. You know what they should really do is have that Shakespeare guy write them a new play. Yeah, they should. He was for good. the Olympics. He was good. Little wordy. Little wordy. But he was good. He was good. Ah. So, yeah, that, that was the show night. It's good to have you back, Tara. I it's think. good to be back. I missed you guys. So, now... Now you the, the fascination with my crotch area was not not good. 